And that's how I stopped the freight cars from taking out the high-speed express and damaging the tracks. Oh, Charlie, that's very exciting. This is why I love visiting the Mountain Valley Line. It looks like even without the Doctor visiting, there's still plenty of action and adventure here. You're right about that. It has been a long time since the Doctor's had an adventure here. Hmm, how strange. Enough chit-chat, Thomas. We've got to deliver these passengers down the branch line. Annie is right. Annie is right. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, of course. Sorry, Charlie. Catch you later. Hey, what's going on at the junction up ahead? We don't usually take this route to the branch line. Just be careful, Thomas, and everything will be fine. I don't know, Annie. I've got that strange feeling in my axles. A feeling I've had before. It only ever happens when... <gasps> I'm about to change railway! Bust my buffers! I'm so adorable! No time for vanity now, Thomas. We still have to deliver the passengers. Yes, yes, Thomas, think of the passengers. Phew, we made it just in time. But now for the real question. How on earth did I end up on the Tomics N-Gage Railway? YouTube Extreme Trains here, and in front of me you can see, as was shown in my most recent video, which was the unboxing of this set, the Thomas & Friends Tomy Tomics Deluxe Set for 2016. Yes, I know it's 2017, but that is when this set was originally released. So, there's a lot to cover in this review because there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about, particularly because this is a kind of world of, of railways and trains and stuff that I've never really experienced before. So apologies if this review gets a little bit long. What I'll try and do is time code the sections in the description below. And also, to say people ask this like a million times, which I'm sure they're going to do, the link where I purchased this will also be in the description below as well as some other links to some cool things if you want to know some more about these different trains. So, what are we waiting for? Let's All right, so we already had a look at the box and the packaging in the unboxing video, um, so I'm not going to go have another look at that because unfortunately I can't give you a lot of insight to what it's about, mainly because I don't speak a word of Japanese, so unfortunately I'm not much help with that. What we're going to do though is get straight to the actual engines you get in this set. So very delicately, first thing I want to look at here is the Thomas model. Now as you can see, this is, I think, the best commercially available Thomas model on the market at the moment. Possibly the best one ever. Yep. You heard me right. This is, I think, the most accurate Thomas model in existence. Why is that, you say? Let's have a look at it. We've got all the right details here from the side. Um, you can see we've got everything from the wheels, the ladder here, running plate in red, nice crisp detailing on the side with all the important markings on it. We've got a nice see-through cabin here. Come around to the top. We've got 3D modded whistles, 3D modded coal. Um, again, all the details in the right plot, uh, in the right spot with the paint and everything. Other sides exactly the same. Come around to the back, you can see we've got the nice details such as the lamp, which is something which is often missing from Thomas models. We've got buffers, which again, note here, they're red until the little black actual buffers. So we've got painted buffers in both positions. There's also a mock coupling hook here, as if the real thing. Obviously, we've got these big ones here, which are the ones that are actually used, but we've got some imitation ones on the front here, which I think are really nice. And then I think most importantly, we come around to the front and we can see that that Thomas face is spot on. It is a really, really good approximation of what the CGI model looks like today. I think it's really, really good. I think it's excellent. I think it's just as good as the one that was on the 17th anniversary Thomas, which I said was my favorite CGI Thomas face. Um, 
I think it's great. I think they've done a really good job, and I think it looks very Thomasy. I think um, I'll flash up a photo in a second of the old version of this that had the different Thomas face. I think that face was actually quite poor, to be honest. I think this one is really, really good. Again, note we've got the splash of white along the running board here. We've got a light lamp on the front with, again, painted buffers. Um, really nice to see that and a front coupling. So to me, this is really, really good. Like, if we're going to nitpick, we can nitpick really, really quickly. Obviously, Thomas is missing the lamp irons here and here, but, like, most Thomases don't have that. And the one other thing which I don't think is quite right from the TV show model is if you come down and look at the coupling rods, you can see the coupling rods are actually smooth around at the end rather than square, which is what they have now in the models in the, in the TV series. Um, but to me, that's, like, such a tiny little concern. Like, literally, who cares? Um, yeah, I think this is an excellent, excellent, excellent uh, little Thomas model, and I, I'm, I'm unafraid to say that it's the best Thomas model on the market. If someone can point me to one that is better, go for your life, but I just don't think you'll find one um, that actually captures all those details at the right size. Right now is when I want to point out how Annie and Clarabel are actually correctly in scale. You will have noticed that if you watch the intro to this video. Um, you can see that my biggest problem, for example, with the Hornby version is that Thomas is so out of scale, he's so much larger than Annie and Clarabel when he shouldn't be, he should be smaller than them. And you can see that this scale size ratio is captured really well with Annie and Clarabel. Grabbing them right now, these are all plastic, um, I should have mentioned that before, they're plastic engines, so that Thomas is made of plastic as well, apart from obviously his motor components. So they are quite light, but they're also quite nice. As you can see, this Annie is uh, very, very nice. You can see through her. I imagine you might be able to open her up. I think you can take the lid off. I'm, I'm not going to do it, but I think you can take the lid off um, to put people inside of her. Um, again, she has a nice, ni nice clean underframe, a little bit of bulk here from the, for, the, for the couplings, but I don't think it's too bad. Classic Annie face being the shocked one, which is fine. Again, nice to see the detail. If I just get the camera to focus of that coupling hook on the front and the rear. Just shows the real attention to detail they've gone into this. Um, very, very basic, but it also seems to be quite easy to screw any Clarabelle up. I think they've done a great job of capturing that look with those colours and that paint scheme. What's really nice about Clarabelle is, unlike most things where they use the same mould, this is actually a slightly different mould. You can see there's actually a baggage compartment here at the back, which is, again, exactly how it should be, but most merchandise does not cover this. So that's something that I'm really, really impressed about. Otherwise, She's exactly the same. She's got the same kind of colouring, same undercarriage and whatnot. Um, again, a really, really nice face. Really love it. I love that they've reliefed the noses so you can see there's actually like a 3D nose. It's not just printed. Uh, yeah, really, really, really nice. I'm thoroughly impressed with the way that these three have turned out. The other three things you get in this set which are Island of Sodor related and not just generally train related are the three pieces of accessories. First of these is the water wheel slash mill thing, which is what you see in the opening credits. It's a little bit bland, I think. This, I think all the stationery is a little bit bland. It could do with a little bit of um, more detail and paint on it. But I think for just, for what it is, um, and included into the set, it's quite nice. I think, though, they've done a good job of making them nice and basic, so, you know, a kid could play with them. Equally nice to see that we've got the um, spinning wheel here. Um, yeah, so I think... The actual execution of this isn't so great, but I think they look quite good on the set as they come. And it's the kind of thing which gives it the Sodor Island feel, which I think is really important. Again, the nice windmill here. We've got a spinning windmill. I think the windmill looks really, really good. I don't think the windmill needs a lot of detail. Um, it's quite a basic kind of building. Um, yeah, again, quite happy with that one. The last item you get is the Farquhar Station. I think this one is quite lacking detail. Like, it, it clearly wants to be something printed in here um, and in these little, uh, you know, posters and stuff which just isn't there, uh, which would be nice, But and the back is very plain. But, again, for an inclusion which didn't have to be there, it's really nice that they've included these in the set, particularly, again, noting that there is no other Thomas stuff in this scale, so I think it's really nice to see Tommy including these in the set even if these three items, or the two and the windmill, which is just off camera, are recycled from the previous run of this set. So that's all the Thomas stuff covered, and I can already say that I was incredibly impressed by the way that it was done um, in that regard. So that to me was really, really awesome.
Then next, onto the track and the train stuff. So being N scale, even though it's like a deluxe set, you actually don't get a lot of track in it size-wise, even though there's quite a few pieces. So to me, this is a fairly decent amount for a starter set, because you do get the um, you get one at least one set of points, you get the siding here for Thomas, um, and you get this nice kind of loop track with some curves on it. Now, this isn't the default setting, you can rebuild it a little bit, but you don't have a lot of straight tracks, there's not a whole lot you can do with it. That said, I think being a bit more specific, the the track, the fine track is what um, Tomix calls it, is really nice actually. Um, it goes together really easily. Um, I think it looks quite good. I don't think it looks very Thomas and Frenzy because of the very, very light grey ballast. Um, to me, it looks a little bit more like modern than Thomas and Friends maybe, but that is the same kind of thing which I think applies for most model railway track. Um, it does have to try and strike a balance, so that's not a problem. Otherwise, though, I think it's quite quite nice. The other thing you get is like a little buffer, which again isn't Thomas and Friends buffer style. As you can see, it's you know a little thing with a little like lamp on it. Um, but I don't think that's particularly a problem because as with all of these, you know you do have a situation where you're trying to include everything. It's nice though that you do get a level crossing. You also get a middle piece for this level crossing. I don't know why you would need a middle piece because there's one built into this track here. But okay, sure, you get that. You also get a re-rail in this set, which I haven't shown because I didn't think it was particularly important because none of these, they're all single bogey engines, so you don't really need a re-railer for them. Equally, the way the track connection works I think is really clever because you can just pull this out. This is the uh, little thing that provides the track with power, and it actually slots into slots on almost any of the tracks. So there's a slot here. It's kind of hard to show on camera. There is like a slight little recess underneath to sleepers on every single piece of track so you don't have to connect this to a certain piece of track which I actually think is quite good because it means if you have your power supply say closer to this wall or something you can put that wherever is most convenient for you I think that's really important um, for a lot of people so that way they don't have cords going everywhere and all that kind of stuff it also means that you can get a lot more use out of the track because you don't have a specialized part which requires the power input into it so in the track section could there be more track included Yes, but I don't think that's super important because it is a starter set and this does give you a nice loop of track, particularly when you only have such a short train that comes with the set. The next thing to look at briefly is this controller. Now this comes with the set, as you can see, it's the Tomix N600. I don't know if that means anything to anyone out there, doesn't mean a lot to me. All I know is that it's a step up from the controller which is included in the basic starter set. Noting again that this transformer, which you can see, is plugged in down there. Um, that comes with the set can be used without uh, a, another transformer, a secondary transformer, in countries that aren't Japan, the US, or Canada. Um, you just need a plug adapter, you don't need a transformer. I don't think that's true for the smaller Thomas starter set. So if you're going to pick up the smaller basic set, be very aware you might need to spend another $20 to $50 getting a secondary transformer to make that controller work. This is quite a basic controller, much more basic than anything I'm used to from Mauchland because it is just literally like, con um, sorry, analog control, which means you have on off, you have direction, so no direction, ha 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 ha, and one direction or the other direction. Um, weirdly, this is forward. Um, to me, it makes more sense that forward would be at the top, but no, forward is down the bottom, and oh well, yeah, so. It's kind of hard to explain, right? So this is showing that this is going to be forward and this is going to be... F yeah, so it's kind of hard because there's no forward and backwards depending on which way the engine's going. But yeah, these are the around the opposite way to what I thought they would be, but they do work. Then you have a really, really smooth... I'm just going to get rid of that just so we don't make Thomas being a distraction. Really, really smooth knob. Now, to me, that's a good thing, but it's also a bad thing because it does mean that you're not really sure if you, how much one turn actually does. Like, you know, because there's no definite clicks anywhere, you know, what's the difference between this and this? Like, is there actually any difference to the performance of the train? Who knows? I prefer, I think, solid, like, a soft click, so you know when you've definitely hit the next notch of power, however that actually works out. However, again, good inclusion in the box, quite simple. It's, I'm glad this is easy to work out because I can't read the instructions. Um... Yeah, good controller. Has some plugs and stuff on the side, if I can just show them to you. Um, so there's this plug here, TCS plug, 
There's also this plug here on the side. I have no idea what they're for. I think that's because this is a more advanced controller. Again, if you know what they're for, go for it. But for the purposes of this set, this does a really good job at giving you the basics um, in a quite easy to use way, which I think is quite important for these kind of starter sets. All right, now onto the running of Thomas himself. I have to say, I'm not a big fan of the way, of the fiddliness of the couplings that are used here. Um, they only will couple on a very dead straight piece of track because of the way they work. So that means that they go together all right, like there's no problem, and you just lift them up to uncouple them like this, very easy. But it does mean that on a set like this, which has a lot of curves, you really can only couple them up properly on this siding here. Um, otherwise, it just, just won't do anything. Now, Thomas's performance is what you probably expect, I think, from a basic DC analog engine. So, on the first round, as you can see, these little points here, easy to switch like that. To get him started, you really need to bring the power to about halfway. Um, he has gotten better as I've used him more. I think he, he wore in or something. Um, and you can see that that's the speed that you get. Now, once you've started him, you can slow him down a little bit. You can bring the notch to about there. And get him to go a bit slower, although the speed is a bit jerky. And I think that's just the way that, because you know he's probably got quite a simple motor in him. Um, as you can see, yeah, it's kind of, there you go, and he stopped. So realistically, you need to really run it about there to get a nice consistent pace out of him. Um, and then equally, you can speed him up by putting it all the way max. And this here is all the way full speed for this engine. Now that's not super fast, but I think it is definitely quicker than it probably needs to be. Um, because even though he's not going that quick, when you look at his like cylinders and piston rods, get them so you can get a bit of a closer look. They are moving very, very quickly. Um, so I think it looks like he's going very quickly. Um, when you're filming the model, for example, for you know like a, a movie purpose, um, even if he's actually physically not going that fast. As you can hear him, he's pretty quiet of a runner. Doesn't make a lot of noise. Um, trying to let you hear that on camera without me talking over it. Yeah, so it doesn't do a, it doesn't do a, a heap of like exciting loud noises, but I also think it's pretty good. In reverse, I find Thomas to be a little bit more problematic. So I've just stopped him here so you can see him just off frame. When in reverse, he seems to start a little bit and then stop, and then he won't actually go until it's past halfway. And so until you get to about here, he won't seem to run in reverse. Um, I found that's with coaches or without coaches. It doesn't seem to matter. Um, I don't really know why that is. But again, it doesn't really worry me. It's just something to be aware of. This is not a high-performance model per se. It is a very basic model. Um, because of the fact that it, A, it's N-gauge, which is really tiny, but B, just because it's, you know, they're trying to make it cheap so that kids um, can buy it or, you know, whatever. So he doesn't have all the super high-tech features that maybe other engines would. Okay, so um, what are my final thoughts on this playset? I think, as I said, that this is definitely, without a doubt, the best, most show-accurate Thomas model available on the market today and possibly one of the most accurate Thomas models that's ever been available. I think the engine and Annie and Clarabel look so incredibly good. They match in every detail beyond, plus some, um, the TV show model. I think they've got the very good Thomas charm, very good Thomas character, and I'm really, really impressed by the way they turn out. I think that's compounded by the fact that it's such a little size, but it captures all those details, which, you know, Hornby and Trackmaster and Wooden Railway just don't do. Um, and even Barkerman, like, they have a really nice model, but they just can't get that face right. Like, the face, the Barkerman face to me is just so wrong. And this one nails it. So I think in that respect, this is an excellent toy. I think the inclusion of the track is good. I think the accessories are good. I think the performance of the engine is totally acceptable. Um, and I'm really, really happy with that. The one thing I would say about this, though, is that it is not a children's toy. This Thomas is covered in small details. He's only made of, like, quite small plastic. He will break if you drop him or throw him around. He is definitely not a children's toy, and I, I don't know how that children's dynamic work, but it's not something that I think that little kids will ever be able to play with properly. So I'm not totally sure what the market is there, um, but I think it's a really, really excellent toy train and definitely an excellent model. And then finally, of course, comes the availability and price. So, 
for this set of off the site I've listed, which was Amazon Japan, um, shipped with express trackable shipping. Um, this was two hundred and five, pretty much exactly Australian dollars. Now that is substantially less than this set was going from the aftermarket prices for the old version, which was you know in Australia people were charging up to five six hundred dollars for this set. Um, or just actually just for Thomas and Ian Clarabelle, five six hundred dollars, which I thought was outrageous. Which is why I've never got one of these sets until now. So to me, two hundred and five dollars, including shipping, for, you know, five day shipping from Japan is pretty darn good for a model railway starter set. Um, now again, Australia pays really high prices for things, so that's you know you when you buy a Thomas or Percy, whether it be Barkman or Hornby from a store. Those engines are about a hundred, a hundred ish. You know, anywhere from anywhere maybe from ninety to one hundred and thirty to one hundred forty dollars each. Anyway, so f to get a whole set for two hundred shipped, when you know individually it's about one hundred and eighty dollars. To me, it's very very good, even at such a small scale. So to me, the price of this is a little bit on the higher side, but worth it when you consider the fact that you're not just paying for Thomas and Ian Clarabelle, and that if you only want them, there is a pack out there that has just those three, so if you've already got an N-scale railway, you don't have to pay for this extra stuff, like the controller and the power unit, which I know are actually one of the biggest expenses in these model toy train sets. So I think the price is good. Um, I know that the distribution for these has been pretty terrible. Um, they're really only distributed in Japan because that's where Tomic sells most of its products. So my advice to everyone is to either look on eBay. There's some really good sellers on eBay um, who sell this for about the same price. Um, I just went with Amazon because I know Amazon. And then Amazon Japan sells a lot of not just this Thomas stuff, but a lot of Tomic stuff as well. Um, and they will ship to most places internationally if you go through, like, you know, the, the uh, supplied by Amazon rather than, you know, the Amazon Marketplace sellers. So, you let me know what you think this set's worth, but for, for, to me, I think 200 Australian dollars is totally legit, and the kind of price which I think you would expect to pay for a model train set of this detail, and of this quality and design. So to me, that doesn't seem to be a problem. In summary, if you are a Thomas fan, and you're a Thomas collector, go get this set if you can afford it, and if you like model trains. Even if you don't like model trains, it's it's an awesome Thomas to have in your collection because it looks so, so good. So to me, this gets a full double thumbs up. Um, possibly, could, I, I said, the title of this is literally going to be possibly the best Thomas of all time. And I'm very happy for people to debate me and show me a better model Thomas. Um, but to me, this wins out and I'm very, very happy to recommend it to everyone. So... They're my thoughts, though. Please let me know your thoughts and questions. I will endeavour to answer any questions that people have about this um, in the comments below. Don't forget to share it with your friends, particularly your other Thomas friends, um, because I couldn't find a lot of videos of these Thomas trains before I bought them. Um, so if people have questions about them, feel free to show them them. Also, apparently, like, my Thomas videos aren't doing good views anymore. I don't know what to go with that. Apparently, I'm not the only one, but people don't watch these videos. They did six months ago. They did eight months ago. They don't now. I don't get it. Yeah, so that's my little rant at the end of that video. But as always, thanks for watching. That's all we've got time for. This is Extreme Trains.